You guys walked up to the booth yesterday just to talk about podcasting, and I'm like, we just got to have you on our show. So <laughs> you guys have your own podcast. Uh, tell us a little bit about your podcast and how that got started. So we are only 13 episodes into our podcast, so we're relatively rookies. But um, my brother loves podcasts. He listens to yours. He's a fan. I had to match make you yesterday. I think he was like a little nervous, like a little nervous approaching you. Um, but uh, we were looking for a way to uh, really bring the community of anglers together in our area. Our brand's really well recognized in Western Canada. And to put our faces behind our brand a little bit more, we're a fourth generation family business. And uh, we're not huge anglers brad and i so it's our chance to talk to people who you know know what they're doing we know how to make a good spoon yeah yep. that we, we know how to we do don't, we, we're not we're not anglers by any means as most of my friends will very eagerly tell people <laughs> i think there was a sign that was put up in our neck of the woods it was like joe stinks at fishing yeah i saw that yeah i saw that that's unbelievably so so maybe we need to make a brand one i'm sure my guy i'm sure my friends don't give them any ideas it probably will happen for me i'm a graphic designer so consider it done Perfect. There you go. <laughs> so the podcast was made for memories podcast yes i found it uh on apple podcast so it's in all kind of the places that you're going to find podcasts and what you guys do is you talk about the business of fishing yep. which is interesting and i think mm. it's something that i mean all these people in here that we talk to, especially in this building, there's a lot of kind of smaller brands that were just created out of someone's garage or someone's basement. Yeah. And so I think a lot of interest, there's a lot of people that fish and say, man, I'd love to work in the fishing industry. I'd love to come up with something that would put me in one of these booths and get to talk to people. And that's what your show is. You're, really, you're, you're talking to people who are in the fishing industry. You guys tell your story a lot too, uh, which I think is very cool. Yeah. we, we I mean, it's not just the lure side though. We try to dive into the business like we had uh, a sales rep on mm -hmm. and learn like that sales reps are, are a key part of our industry mm -hmm. how does that business work we have a lodge owner you know how does that work we, we had have, a trout farm on yeah we had yeah. a trout Which farm on cool. yeah, yeah exactly like how does mm -hmm. stocking trout work and what's the business behind that so we try to we try to get into a bunch of different areas of of the business of the outdoor industry not just spoons or lures or whatever and yeah of course we try to be like there is a component most people plug the the land thompson's of the northern kings during it mm -hmm. but that's not the key focus the key focus is it's like i'm interested in generic information uh about a certain topic i listen to podcasts that cover a wide variety of of information that's why i like that's why i like fishing the great lakes podcast because right. it, it's a wide variety of of uh of topics and you learn a lot more than something that dives into something at nauseum so mm -hmm. Well, and fishing is so regional, right? Right. It's so different here than it is in the Western prairies where we're from. So you, you can learn something from anybody right. that you didn't know before. And I think that's what's great about podcasting, too, is you can find a podcast about the business of fishing. You can find a podcast about Great Lakes fishing. Uh, we're actually planning on starting a new podcast. It'll be coming out really soon. And it's going to be about Western fishing. And we were considering doing it. Um, along with the Great Lakes show. And I'm like, it doesn't make sense because we have our Great Lakes audience and I don't want to hit them with Western fishing because most of those people aren't interested in that. So that's the beauty of, of podcasting is we can do our own show. It's not like back in the days when there was three TV channels and everything had to go on those three TV channels. Yeah. So every show had to appeal to everyone. Yeah. Now we can do micro broadcasting and get those shows out to the people that are going to appeal to those shows. Yeah. So that's what's the, the beauty with the podcast is that you can do these types of things that focus on one sole uh, topic or one sole range of topics. That are. Absolutely. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you guys uh, started the podcast to put a face to your brand. That's one thing we haven't talked about yet is your brand. So tell us kind of who you are, because I know you guys are, it's a family company. It's a fourth generation company. Tell us how, how that's evolved. Yeah, so our great grandfather Len Thompson uh, started a company in his shed right. in 1929, uh, looking for something that could outcatch his friends' uh, tackle that that they could buy at the time. And over you know a couple of decades, it it grew into uh, from a part-time business into a full-time business. In 1945, when he asked my grandpa Pallister, uh, who married Len's daughter into the business and they created a full-time business uh, out of it and it's been going strong ever since then 
Um, I joined the business uh, 11 years ago from a banking career. Uh, Jess joined a couple, three years after me. She, she is a market and tried to build it up into a little bit bigger house. And part of that was buying a trolling spoon brand, which was uh, Northern King, which we bought in 2016. So yeah, that's us in a real quick nutshell, I think. Mm -hmm. We bought Northern King in 2016 from another family business. They were second generation um, and it just felt like a really good fit. I think they were excited that we were planning on carrying on not only the product and keeping it made in North America. So they used to make it in Rochester, New York, and now we make it up in Canada, um, but also carrying on his name and his legacy and history is really important to us. So you see the old stuff that we have in the factory. We're yeah, got a little, little museum there. Yeah. And, yeah. I, I love that you come from the finance background and you come from the marketing background because usually these businesses are driven either by the marketing people or the finance people. And those companies sometimes don't work out very well. You need, you need some yin and yang in there, and that's what you guys bring. Well, and we actually get along. People ask us that a lot. Right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> They're like, how does, that? like, no. um, yeah, we get along pretty well, and we're passionate about different things. So it's uh, very complimentary it, uh, personalities, too. And like, I'm more fun, well, obviously. I, debatable. <laughs> she's an introvert, too, right. and I'm an extrovert. And and uh, you wouldn't think that, but it, it, it works because you yeah. have somebody that, that can tap the brakes a little bit if I'm going too strong and vice versa, right? So mm -hmm. it works pretty good for us. You know, over the time, uh, even the show, uh, you know, we, we've we really um, got some really positive feedback and we still have some, uh, some ways to go, but we rely on people that fish the Great Lakes uh, because we're, we don't fish the Great Lakes. We just know how to make a good spoon. So uh, if we get the right colors and we get the right sizes and we get the right assortment and distribute it to the right regions, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we're going to rebuild back what was uh, once one of the most powerful, uh, popular, I guess, uh, brands in the Great So, So you've been here at this show all weekend long. This is the last day of the show. Um, there's not probably a better room to have some Great Lakes stuff set up than that. You've got a ton of charter captains here and you have a ton of really, really good recreational angle, anglers in the room. Mm -hmm. What what have you, what kind of feedback have you received this week? Uh, what are you going to take home with you? lessons moving forward this pattern you needed this pattern you needed this pattern you needed so i think we're covering the basics a lot better but i think there's always learning because things are always changing trends are always changing but um being here is a good chance to build those relationships and make those connections and get some samples back in boats again because lots of these guys say they have 500 spoons in a tackle box but mm -hmm. they always seem to find room for one or two more right. so it's yeah. about getting them in the water yeah and 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 you know they had nk they say oh i got you know i got 500 nks in my in my boat mm -hmm. uh well yeah but have you tried the new the new ultra glows or the oh yeah no i haven't seen those yeah no those are good yeah those look really good because the technology changes even since uh you know the last 10 years and the painting and well, paint things. paints are always changing yeah. Regulations are always changing. The way they make paints are always changing. So we're always looking for improvements. Um, this year, we just put out a new glow. We've been working on our glow for years, trying to make it as strong, powerful, long-lasting, smooth as possible. And we're to the point where we're actually really, really happy with it. So it's been fun showing that off. We got all the UV lights in our booth and, mm -hmm. you know, people stopping being, ooh, shiny. Because sometimes it's about catching the fishermen right. almost more than catching the fish. I don't know if I'd say sometimes. <laughs> Always it's Most about the catching time, the fishermen. Right. <laughs> yeah. So you talk about that, and I don't want you to have to give away secrets or anything like mm. that. How do you develop that? Like, how do you develop a paint combination? What what work goes into that? It, we it, we a have of, a really good team. We do. It's, it, it, we've got a good team that has a lot of leeway to make mistakes and try things out. Um, and... You know, we had some downtime over the pandemic, too, uh, that we were able to really focus on R&D and evaluate a ton of different paints. and ton of Because even if you get a paint, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work unless you develop the art behind it. Because the, the, there's science, but then there's the artistic part of the science. Mm -hmm. And and uh, it's, uh, it's definitely the unique part of our business is mm -hmm. paint is tricky. Tricky. Tricky's tricky. Good. Tricky is a lighter word than what Brad was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about uh, your facility. Uh, you guys are in Alberta, right? Yep. Yes, yeah. we're in Alberta. We're in a community called Lacombe. 
um, which is halfway in between Edmonton and Calgary, if people are familiar with with Alberta. Um, and we're also home of the world's largest lure. How did that happen? Uh, for our 90th anniversary, we built a 40 and a half inch spoon that's at 40 and our half inch or sorry feet yeah 40, 40 and a half. half feet lure that's at our community pond called the len thompson trout pond i saw that in your catalog today. did you <laughs> and i was intrigued by that uh-huh do you guys have a u.s catalog and a canadian catalog we do okay because i'm like why are they measuring in inches this is a canadian company <laughs> <laughs> well actually uh in canada metric is the dominant yep but it's i think still in like construction and uh the outdoor industry still imperial is the is the go-to measurement i couldn't tell you how many kilograms i weigh but i know how many too many pounds i weigh we're not going to talk about that (laughs) so what are you guys what are your plans moving forward i mean you brought this company on uh we brought in northern king in 2016 len thompson obviously is a legacy company that's been Mm -hmm. around forever with you guys and your family what do you where do you see this company going forward I think for us, um, staying Canadian is extremely important. That's what we've built 94 years of history on. So we we really want to keep committed to that. We have a factory of uh, 16 employees, 18 including us right now. So we really want to stick close to home and then look for other opportunities to kind of grow and expand as they become available. Yeah, I mean, uh, being we, we brand ourselves 100% North American made product in terms of you know, the brass comes from Buffalo, the, the hooks are Eagle Claw come from Denver, the rings come from Washington State, paint comes from Georgia, packaging comes from Chicago, and made with Canadian labor. And and uh, that's the way we really want to grow is, is, is not only necessarily in our product lines, but looking for strategically... Um, you know, viable opportunities to grow as a as a domestically made products uh, brands. We like legacy brands, um, but uh, until those opportunities come up, I, we're just going to focus really hard on on what we know, which is spoons, and and we're going to focus really hard on expanding our our footprint in the Great Lakes through product development and and uh, getting it back into the market and uh, try to throw in a couple fishing trips in between too like <laughs> you get a test yeah, exactly it's product testing yeah. we do a very poor job of that yeah we do yeah but and more colors yes and, and of course colors. yes so we don't get yelled at <laughs> <laughs> well it's interesting you brought up you know you're canadian made you've got all of these different components that go into your product from north america um, obviously with what's happened over the last two or three years uh, the companies that have been importing things from overseas have uh, seen how that can affect their product and how it can affect how quickly they can get their product out. We still face it as U.S. manufacturers, though, as well. I'm sure you did as Canadian manufacturers. But being North American produced um, definitely has its advantages. And there's, it's something that people are looking for these days. But I think in this community, in this fishing community, it's even more important. Where Have you guys seen that as well? Yes. Yes and no. I mean, there is some some good there is some good products that are made overseas there's no question about that and there are some great brands that are make their products overseas there's no question about that and i and, and as a canadian or north american manufacturer i am well aware of the challenges of manufacturing domestically um but it works for us and it's what we're passionate about and uh you know we obviously want to see if we can expand that especially as you say the um the last few years through COVID, it, the supply chain being exclusively, uh, not exclusively, but majority overseas has, has ex- uh, exposed some weak points. So if we can be part of, uh, you know, consolidating that back to, to North America or or even just expanding our product line to what we have available here, um, that's just what we're passionate about. So uh, no, no. Um, no judgment against brands that, that decide to go overseas. That's for sure because I, you know I get it. But we we want to be we want to focus on North American made growth and and that's certainly where our passion lies. So. All right, we'll talk to Jess now because I'm going to ask a marketing question. Now. Mm. Yeah, I don't know anything about marketing. Yeah. If people want to know more about Len Thompson and Northern King Lures, where do they go? They can go to lenthompson.com or nklures.com. And then we're also active on Facebook and Instagram under at Fish Len Thompson. 
at fish. And is that where the Northern King stuff is? Yeah, well? they're combined together. Okay, yeah. combined together. Mm-hmm. And and for our podcast listeners, mm-hmm. you have to go to their podcast, Made for Memories podcast. I pulled it off of Apple today. Uh, where else is it? Uh, it's also on Spotify, um, Apple, as you said, and you can listen to it on our website at lenthompson.com slash podcast. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, Brad Pallister, Jess Pallister, do thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for inviting us. That was very unexpected. Exciting. And I was actually really nervous because I edit the podcast, mm-hmm. right? So I can cut out if I sound like adult and yeah. say inches instead of feet, but... Now I'm exposed to the world. It's it'll be okay. It'll be okay. That's, okay. that's the beauty of live is that everyone gets to see our warts and it's just fine. <laughs> that's what I would say. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you for having us, Chris. We thank really you. appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your show. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Great Thanks, meeting you guys. It was you fun. too. Thanks, Thanks Brad. Take care. Bye.